Welcome into the Original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going to do another power ranking. Fall 2024 Chicago outfit power rankings. Remember, guys have to be on the street. So um, Mikey, a fat Mike Sarno does not apply uh, to these rankings. But uh, I'm going to break it down for you. One through 10, and we're going to go 10 up to one most powerful members of the Chicago outfit on the street right now in September of 2024. Uh, number 10, Little Gags, Gary Gagliano has been around forever. His dad, Joe Gagliano, was a legend. Um, goes back and forth between Elmwood Park and Florida. Acting skipper. Uh, number nine, one of the uh, younger generation Fast Risers, uh, Nikki Ferriola, Nikki Spoons, whose dad was the former boss, Joe Ferriola. Uh, Nikki was a part of the Operation Family Secrets trial about 20 years ago when he was a, a young lad, I believe in his 20s. He is now, I'm told, uh, acting skipper of Southside uh, Chinatown. Number eight, Christy the Nose Spina, allegedly acting skipper of uh, Grand Avenue crew has been getting a lot more juice and a lot more responsibilities last couple of years as Albie Vina has uh, started to kind of uh, transition more into retirement. Um, number seven, Frank Caruso, Tootsie Babe, official capo of Southside and has been there for 25 years. You know, uh, you know, comes from a rich mob stock the Caruso mob dynasty over in Chinatown. His dad, Skids Caruso, was uh, was the capo there for quite a while. Um, number six, Pudgy Matassa, John Jr. His dad was a driver for Sam Giancana. Pudgy uh, was one of the final uh, uh, capos of the North Side crew before it got rolled into Grand Avenue has been a acting conciliary, and I'm told right now he could be the current uh, conciliary of the Chicago outfit. Either way, he's got a lot of um, a lot of say, a lot of sway. Uh, guys, listen to him. And uh, I got him at number six. Brings us to our top five. Number five, a guy that's kind of a boss in his own right, uh, Rudy Fratto, a.k.a. The Chin. Rudy... You know, he goes back to Accardo, the DeFranzo brothers' protege. You know, he's he's a bit of a lightning rod. We all know people either love him or hate him. And he's been, according to our reporting, Rudy has been allowed to kind of take Elmwood Park and run it semi-autonomously. Uh, and I refer to him as a faction boss. There was some talk that he might have been conciliary. Um, but whatever his official title is, Rudy Fratto is nationally respected, uh, can go to any city and, and get the VIP treatment in terms of mob dignitaries and uh, still has a lot of respect and juice in Chicago into his 80s. Okay, so number four, it's not a person, it's a group. It's this, um, I call them the future of the Chicago outfit, the uh, younger generation Cicero group, all or most of them former 12th Street players. Um, this group came up under uh, Mike Sarno back in the 2000s. They're loyal to Sarno. They're loyal to Cicero kind of more so than to the outfit as a whole, which is, you know, interesting and of note. Um, they still take counsel from, from Mike Sarno from prison who calls in at least once or twice a week. Uh, some of these guys are in... Uh, Mike Sarno's old headquarters at the pawn shop. Um, again, they, they, a lot of these guys trace their roots to the 12th street players, which goes to, you know, the term I've been using, which is kind of the street gangification of the modern day Chicago outfit. But these guys who range in ages from the early, from the early sixties to the late forties um, are guys that are going to be taking the outfit into the future. Uh, in addition to the street gang guys, they got some brains, you know, guys that are um, numbers guys and white collar guys and are, are doing a good job evolving the outfit uh, in a forward direction. Uh, number three, Albie Vina, the most 
feared man in Chicago still, even though he's in his 70s right now. He's the street boss, the godfather of Grand Avenue, a guy that seems to have gamed the system. Um, the government believes that he's responsible for over a dozen gangland homicides, has only been charged with one, and he beat that case, uh, Sammy Taglia in a 95 trial. Taglia was, they call him Sammy Needles, but was killed in 92 in Northbrook. Um, but Albie, although he might be stepping back a little bit more, uh, still, you know, this guy is a, a powerhouse like few uh, in the country. So then brings us to our last uh, two guys. You know, since the power right now is in Cicero, it's not shocking that the, the, the two most powerful guys right now in the outfit are Cicero guys, uh, Sammy Catadella, a.k.a. Uh, Sally C., a.k.a. Sammy Cards, um, the underboss, maybe the most underrated Midwest Mafia figure that exists today. Very quiet. Mike Sarno's uh, right hand. And, and he kind of keeps uh, an eye on that younger Cicero group and is, you know, is grooming them to eventually take the reins. And then finally, Salvatore De Laurentiis, Solly D, the godfather of the entire Chicago outfit, a man that needs no introduction, a man whose reputation precedes him around the globe. Everybody loves Solly D. Um, just, you know, universally beloved, universally respected, universally feared, checks all three boxes. That's why he is um, a guy that ha has been a Don now for, about 15 years um, started out as acting now as official, but uh, nobody would have been shocked if back in 19, you know, go back 40 years to 1984, someone would have told you that in 2024, Solly De Laurentiis would be boss. Nobody would have been surprised because uh, this is something that I think uh, a lot of people foresaw for him. And, and he was able, when he first came out of prison, I'm told that uh, he acted in kind of a, a counselor role bridging the gap between the the new and the old um and now uh you know he he's not incredibly active he, he's out in lake county which is where he's from and uh lets uh, sammy and uh the cicero guys run the day-to-day -day operations has trust in alby has trust in um the elmwood park guys as well as the south side guys but solid de Laurentiis is uh, a true blue og and uh, will die most likely as the godfather of Chicago. Who knows? He seems to be in pretty good shape right now at 80, around 84, 85. But uh, slowing down a little bit, but uh, still very sharp. And uh, a guy that uh, I'm sure Tony Accardo would be quite proud of in the way that he's handled his role. So that's my uh, top 10. Chicago Mob Power Rankings, fall of 2024. Please like, subscribe, and share. Spread the word about OG Pod. Go check out the Patreon, which is a little bit different, our members-only Patreon, where you get, you know, first look at our interviews. You get the director's cut of our interviews. So, you know, if an interview on YouTube goes an hour, your interview's going to go an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes. And then you get more kind of exclusive insight analysis than, than breaking news um, here, uh, or than you get here, you'll get over at the... Uh, Original Gangsters, Patreon members only. Thanks, Ben, behind the glass. He's the one that uh, keeps me moving. He's my MVP. Uh, couldn't be doing this without Benny. Scott Mernstein, OG Pod. I'm out.